McInerney. It's Jack McInerney again! Let it fly. Good afternoon and welcome to Laney College. Charles Wolin, Ridge Mahoney with you here in commentary from the gantry right here overlooking the stadium. The first NISA game of 2020 for both of these two teams, Oakland Roots and Chattanooga FC. For Oakland, they weren't able to win a game last year in the fall showcase, but now it's the spring. They have a new head coach. They have some core players from last year, but it's mainly a new core, kind of a fresh face for this Oakland team. If you watch the Roots last year, if you know anything about the team, you'll realize what a success they were in every place except on the field. Sellout crowds at Laney, merchandise flying off the shelves, a real identity here in the Oakland community, but no victories. So the coach, Jordan Farrell, he was assistant last year. He's really renovated the team almost down to the last player. So you'll see a lot of new faces and new energy, but this is the first game, their first chance against another team that's playing its first professional game in Chattanooga FC to start off the season. Chattanooga, they've been around since 2009, applying their trade in the NPSL. They moved up to the NISA at the end of last year, and now this is their first ever professional match. Also very excited, very jubilant from head coach Peter Fuller. They were an NPSL team last year. That's more or less the fourth division. Now NISA up to the third division. They've gone professional. So they had to make a lot of tough choices with players who had been in the Chattanooga community for years. Some of them had to be let go. Some of them aren't available today because of visa issues or injuries. So Peter Fuller, he's renovated his team as well. I think he's as anxious as the fans to see what Chattanooga FC is going to look like here in this new season. This is the pregame show sponsored by Oaklandish, oaklandish.com. We'll be back with first half lineups and kickoff after this. Dr. Roth, thank you so much for talking to me today. This facility in particular has something really unique and special. It has an urgent care that deals only in orthopedic issues. It's a hard task for a regular urgent care or an ER to be able to do everything. They have to be able to manage chest pain, they have to be able to manage an ingrown toenail, and so we figured that why don't we just open up our own urgent care just for these exact kinds of injuries. I feel inspired now to go get my knee lifted <laughs> at this point. Time. But, uh, thank you so much. No problem. Thanks a lot. I'm really excited to be a part of EBCE because of all the opportunities it will offer me to save money. I was surprised to find out that I could actually have a choice about where my energy comes from. Thanks to EBCE, our kids are going to have a clean planet to live on when they're older. I need the power to work in my studio. Of course, I'd love to be able to use more renewable energy. We now have choices, and I'm happy to choose East Bay Community Energy as my source for local clean power. That is the downtown skyline of Oakland. Charles Wolin and Ridge Mahoney with you here for the NISA spring season. Oakland Roots hosting Chattanooga FC right here at Laney College. The teams are walking out to the pitch right now. The energy and the passion, it is palpable. We're in good place, Charles. I think uh, you know this first game of the season, the people are coming out, and we got a quick uh, note down in the field today. Now to the third member of our broadcast team, Callista Tyree. Thank you, Charles, and welcome everybody here to Laney College for the spring home opener of the Oakland Roots Soccer Club. As you can tell, the weather is a little bit chilly, some wind and some clouds in the air, but it's clearly evident if you look behind me that this stadium and these fans are about to light up just as the ball gets kicked off.
I just got a chance to talk to Benji Hoya last night before um, coming into the practice and he was clear that it was very, very exciting time for him and he was really pumped up and trying to get his team pumped up for the, this game. Thank you and back to Charles. This is Ridge, Jim. Try to get him to come out of the boat. Or you can do it during the boat. This is Chattanooga's first professional game, but they have been around since 2009. There you see pictures of Peter Fuller, who was very energetic, and he got right on the field last night be, uh, before uh, his team had the chance to train here, and he actually took a little video selfie of himself right on the field, and he sent it right to uh, his front office, but he is uh, really, really ready to go for this, Rich. Well, he's looking forward to his first professional assignment. He has been in the MLS before with New England in Philadelphia, assistant last year to Billy Elliott, who is now the technical director. So Peter Fuller, you know, he's had to deal with a lot of uh, mishaps during the preseason, a lot of rain. Haven't had much time to train on a dry field like he's going to see here tonight, but uh, he's got a lot of experience coaching in the United States, and uh, I know he's looking forward to this first pro season uh, with Chattanooga. For head coach Jordan Farrell, he was the assistant last year here in Oakland, but when he was appointed, he said, football is for the people, and I want to build a unique style here that represents the town and allows us to be at our best against the best. He is a football romantic at heart, Jordan Farrell, in his first year. I think Jordan is really excited as well. It was a shakedown cruise last year, really, for the Roots. We talked about it in the open. Great crowds, merchandise flying off the shelves, but no victories. And as the assistant to Paul Bravo, they share somewhat similar coaching philosophies, but he's had five or six weeks, a fairly long preseason for a Division Three team to kind of uh, implement his ideas. And we're all looking forward to seeing what it looks like here tonight, Charles. Let's take a look at our team news and our starting lineups, which are presented by Oakland Kia, the Roots local vehicle sponsor. Visit Oakland Kia for your next purchase or lease. For Chattanooga, they line up in a 3-5-2 formation. Phil D'Amico, the goalkeeper, across the back line. It's Sean Reynolds. Soren Juhaszczyk, Jerry St. Ville. At the left wing back spot is Raymond Lee. Right wing back, Brian Bement. There's three in midfield, Kyle Carr, Ian McGrath, and Sean Hofstadter. The two up top, well, it's going to be Santiago Agudelo and Ryan Marcano. For the Oakland Roots, they also line up in a very similar shape. Also a 3-5-2. It might be a 5-3-2 at times. Taylor Bailey is the goalkeeper. Robert Hines, the second, the right wing back. Kadeem Say 
at right center back. Alongside him, Daniel Navarro and David Adabor slots in at left center back. The left wing back, Angel Heredia. And in midfield, Johannes Harish, Peter Pearson, and Benji Hoya. The two up top tonight. It is Jack McInerney with six goals in the fall showcase. Three, a hat trick on the first ever Oakland Roots game. And alongside him, Matt Fondy. And we are underway here in Oakland. Right off of the kickoff, McInerney just hoofs it right into the stands. Settled down here by Hoya, who's wearing the captain's armband, but quickly dispossessed. Here's Robert Hines II for Oakland. Played his last matches with SF City FC across the other side of the bay for a couple of seasons. And now enjoying his time at this right wing back position for Oakland. This is Hoya now. Into the feet of Harish. Brought down here by Kadim Say. One back by Hofstetter as he continues to fight for Chattanooga. And you'll see Hofstetter playing more or less a traditional number eight role. Looks like Chattanooga is going to have some pretty clear cut defined roles in their midfield. There's a long ball that Evie collected by the Roots keeper Bailey. And they'll build out again. Here is David Adebor, who last played at Hapoel Ben Lod in Israel before becoming back stateside, featuring for this Oakland Roots side. Four or five holdovers from the Roots from the fall. Benji Hoya, Jack McInerney. A couple of them in this team. Now we should mention that uh, we expected Nana Atacora to be leading the center back, leading the roots from center back, but he's got been b bothered injuries this week, so he does not get a start. It's the first cross from Hines from that right wing position, and you'll see the outside backs get up and down in this system for coach Jordan Farrell, and I would expect the same on the opposite end there for Peter Fuller. Well, Peter Fuller will probably set them out a little bit more cautiously, of course, because they've had so much disruption of their preseason. I don't think he's really confident in exactly how the team is going to set up and how they're going to play, but he does have, as you say, a couple outside players in uh, Bement and Lee on the outside. We'll have to see as the game unfolds how many opportunities they get up. You can see 15 here is also Sean Reynolds. He'll float between a right center back and a right back position, at least early on until they start feeling the roots out and get a sense of what uh, what they can do. Santiago Agudelo chasing the ball down there. Agudelo, he had 42 goals in 39 appearances for Fort Hayes State. Ball over the top, knocked down here, Agudelo, and the offside flag is raised. Good ball lofted from midfield. Roots were a little bit slow to react, but they did manage to push up just in time. That was Ian McGraw, who plays the number eight box-to-box -box role, sneaking out through midfield, and it was a good job by the back line to push him offside. So very clever tactic. Set that mid midfielder through. You may catch the defenders napping because they're looking at the forwards and not somebody coming from a deeper position. Yeah, they really like Ian McGrath in this side. Very much a player that is unorthodox at that number eight or that number 10 or that number six position. He's a he's a good central midfielder. Hopefully a lot more to come from him. Here's Hoya now looking for Harish over his head. Harish, did get enough, get, Harish was beaten in the air but did not give up on that ball and forced the throw for the roots. Here's Heredia popped up to, to, into the air by McInerney and finally settled by Hines. Hoya dispossessed, and Oakland's gonna win a restart in Chattanooga's half. Well, they wanted to take it quickly, but referee calls it back. Ball was still rolling, has to be still. 
even at this level, that's a, pretty much a constant. You have and to have the ball stationary. And it was actually five yards back and from where it other, was. That was probably the other problem, yeah. Here's Adebor. Navarro building out of the back now. And I see Chattanooga with four in the back. I know they started off with five, but Bement, who was kind of floating, he's gone up to the front line. So whether it's a 4-4-2 or 4-3-3, it looks now as if Chattanooga maybe was not quite being as uh, forthcoming as they might have been because they've definitely got four in the back now, uh, bolstered also, like I said, with that Kyle Carr and McGrath as the two more uh, defensive midfielders supporting Hofstadter, more or less the traditional number 10. Yeah, Coach Peter Fuller said that they toyed around with many systems in preseason, more of a truncated preseason ridge. They only had about three and a half weeks to get things right. Well, and he was saying that uh, even though they have, uh, you know, they only travel with 18 players, they had to sign a few players that they don't plan on having all season just to fill out the roster. Players stuck with visa issues, a couple of injuries. So uh, it's kind of a hodgepodge to start off the season. And like I say, and we said in the open, um, only three days of clear weather during preseason it rained the rest of the time. Well, it's definitely not going to dampen the spirits whatsoever. And there's a couple Chattahooligans that we got a chance to speak with before the game, too, beating the drums and very excited about that with their motto, lift up your hearts and sing loud. Nice to see good supporter culture coming together. And it's like-mindedness for both of these two sides, what Oakland's building and community spirit and what Chattanooga's built since 2009, building a genuine, legitimate community spirit that that these two teams have. And Well, that's a community-owned team, Chattanooga also. I think it's 3,400 members now. It's incredible. I mean, it's a great concept. You see it in Europe and around the world. And they, when they decide to go professional, they asked everybody, you want to pitch in? You want to be part of the group? And uh, more than 3,000 uh, minority partners, investors, whatever you want to call it. Falls here for Matt Fondy, local lad from Foster City, Fondy. Looking to thread the ball in there for Harish. Yeah, Haredi was moving up from the left side completely unmarked. That's one of the things in the preseason that really hasn't come together quite yet, is Fondy and McInerney working out that partnership you saw there. One of them was kind of isolated. The other one was trying to find space, trying to find a lane for that ball to be played into that. But that's going to take a lot of work because, uh, you know, McInerney's a traditional striker. Fondy's played as, as a striker as well. They're going to try to play two up top and let them figure it out. Here's Kyle Carr. Operating on the left. It's a nice, nice work. work against two players. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, that was not bad. A little tightrope action there. Switch of the field here to Angel Heredia. From San Jose, played his last games at FC Tucson before joining this Oakland Roots team. Pearson thought he was fouled there. He certainly got uprooted. Looked like he was ready to make a switch of play, push it out to the side after it came from Heredi on the left, but the referee let the play continue, and the Roots have to start out again from the back. Yeah. Chattanooga a little bit more tentative, a little bit more cautious here in this opening 15 minutes or so. Their forwards are very aggressive, though. They're going to push the Roots into errors if uh, they're not smooth at the back, moving the ball. Here we are coming switch of play once again. Those forwards have been pretty mobile. Of course, it's still early. We don't expect them to have a 90-minute level of fitness just because their preseason's been so disrupted. Nice opening there from Harish to Hoya looking for Fondi. Pearson got a good job ball. That ball was kind of scuffed by Hoya. Pearson scooped it up, and now Heredi has to chase. And here's good work by Harish, and he's fouled just around the central midfield. It was Agadello, though, one of the forwards coming back. So they've, they've tried to put the pressure in the middle third and get the Roots, uh, if they're trying to disrupt that rhythm that the Roots are trying to establish. But they're doing a good, good ball of going, you know, feet to feet so far. Fondi, he is upended, and he will win a free kick. Close to the edge of the area just around five, six, seven yards away. That was Le Raymond Lee, I believe, the left back. He didn't like that call at all. We'll take a look at it again. I don't think the Lee had much of a grab on him, but he was leaning back and got the foul. Yeah, Jerry Saintville there with that foul. Free kick taker. 
is on Hel Heredia and Hoya. Four in the wall here for Chattanooga. Four in the box for the Roots, including uh, Fondi. He's got a <laughs> he's a big target up there. Hoya, Heredia in the queue behind the ball. It's going to be Heredia, takes it, goes right into the wall. Fizzed on in, Jack McInerney takes a shot. Deflected away. Good defending there by Chattanooga. Good ball in by Navarro from the left side as well. That uh, could have caused some problems, but Chattanooga managed to scramble it free. McInerney got the shot, but it was blocked. A little bit of overlap with these two teams. Jack McInerney actually has Tennessee roots and was coached by Peter Fuller in ODP when he was a young lad, as well as the goalkeeper for Oakland, Taylor Bailey, is from Tennessee as well and from the southeastern part of the state. And nice to see the connections there. Here is Jack McInerney, and he wins a corner. That was Abador who made that pass out of the back, so the Roots are finding those lanes into midfield. Good work so far to get uh, get the ball upfield from the out from the central defender positions. And we'll see what Hoya can do now with his corner. Uh, Navarro, the center back, is one of the players in the box, along with Fondi. Some good height there for the Roots. You can see a couple of advantages there they might be able to exploit. Hoya on his right, looking for Fondi. Takes a little bit of a ricochet. It's Kadim Say comes off of an arm. Here's Navarro. Heredia once more, serving the ball, ball. in. It's Robert oh. Hines! Oh. And Hines' is header over the bar there. Well, that was a reset after the corner, so Hines just stayed up, and I think the Chattanooga defenders forgot all about him. He raced in there, was coming in at a good angle, but uh, got under the ball and put it over the top. But some nice work by the Roots on the reset after the initial clearance. Some good passing set up a chance. Yeah, keeper came out. All Hines had to do was nudge it over him, but he got under it. There's McGrath. And now Navarro. Hines down the sideline for Hoya, who leaves it back for Hines. The return ball for Hoya. It's brilliant stuff here from Oakland Roots. The fans love it. Hoya McInerney. And a foul on the far side. And McInerney can't turn that one home. Wonderful combination play down the sideline with Hoya and Robert Hines the second. Well, Hoya is you know, going to be the playmaker, but he loves to get outside on the right-hand side. And you saw that little move he did hurdling a defender. And then McInerney was marked up pretty well by the defender. A little bit of contact there. Good defending in the end, but a great ball set up for Hoya. And uh, that's a ball that McInerney is going to get. If he gets enough of those this season, he's going to put them away. Agadello chasing, and Taylor Bailey is there first. Good for Bailey. In the 14th minute, that's really the only quick reaction he's had to make, and he was on top of it. Here's McInerney for Harish, and now Fondi. Adebor over the top, looking for Fondi. Harish, top of the area. Cleared away by McGrath, but Harish still working hard there. Navarro. Nice turn. Harish. Heredia on the left side. Featured in all of Oakland's games in the fall showcase. Here is 
Fondi knocks, knocks it down. Harish. Nice pressure here from Oakland. And Kyle Carr finally on the ball here. And he's looking to clear. Now Jerry Saintville has a little bit of a breath. Gets a chance to switch the field. Chattanooga able to clear their lines. Yeah, I think that was Juhaschek who was on McInerney earlier. Just got enough of him to keep McInerney from turning that ball in. He was also on the last play, made a block again. Tracking back is Brian Bement. Good work there from Heredia. A little double team work with Harish coming in to help dispossess Chattanooga. Hoya on the turn. Over to the left looking for Harish. It's one of the few times in this uh, first 15 minutes that Chattanooga's really been able just to kind of settle and see what they can put together coming up out of the back. Kyle Carr. Playing in that defensive midfield position in front of the back four today for Chattanooga. And that ball goes a little bit wayward into the path of Agudelo. And I didn't think he, think he, he thought it was coming his way there. Chattanooga is also, uh, I think both teams are a little bit surprised with the wind. We didn't expect the wind come up today. Uh, you can see the flags blowing pretty vigorously out there. Not sure in which pockets, you know, it's making more of an influence on the ball than in other spots. Here is Johannes Harish for McInerney. Mm. He had already coming up the left, uh, did McInerney, but he couldn't get the ball over to him. A little bit off balance on that one, but they do have the throw. Heredia. Good work this from Oakland, building out of the back, using the feet of the goalkeeper. And Jordan Farrell wants to play attractive football, entertaining football. He wants the fans to come back. He is wanting to play a modern style, of course. Chattanooga is having all sorts of trouble keeping Benji Hoya off the ball. He's been out by the touchline. Now you see him more central. He's getting the ball just about every time he wants. So I think that's an adjustment that Chattanooga is going to have to say is, you know, get on Hoya because uh, just about every attack is coming through him right now. Here is Hoya. And now Harish on the turn over to his left side. Pearson. Heredia, 1v1. Marcano coming back to make that interception inside the 18. And a free kick here. That was a dangerous play, even though he got contact on the ball. McGraw was trying to control it. It was well above the waist, so a referee call for an indirect free kick. Throw in on the far side for Chattanooga. Hofstadter to take it. I think he wants a long throw in there. Ian McGrath diving in the box there. Perhaps he was tripped or pushed. Back up on his feet now. And we're seeing the the Roots, three central defenders. And we'll look at this ball that Bailey should collect easily. And uh, that should get a talking to. Not a card, but definitely uh, something the referee will take a note of. 
That was a hard challenge coming in there from Bement. And he got into Bailey pretty heavily. Brian Bement's last club was Ford Madison of USL League One. Well, that central three, it's Say who's in the middle with um, Navarro on the right, Abador on the left, and then those three centrally with the wingbacks, Heredia and Hines out wide. Uh, that was uh, the question, if not Adekora did not play, which he's not doing, is who's gonna take that central role? And so far it's been Say who's manning the middle. Here's Benji Hoya. Trying to exchange a pass with Hines. Agadello finds himself in a little bit of space here, pressing the ball as Oakland trying to sort it out in the back line. Here's Kadeem Say. Had to get that right there. Well, that was Raymond Lee who kind of skated up the left touch line there and gave the Roots some problems, and Chattanooga has been able to keep possession and press into the final third. Yeah, there's been a lot of attacks for the Roots down Raymond Lee's side, and now Raymond Lee wanted to have a little bit of a response himself <laughs> down the left side. Well, that's the first thing a left back wants to do if he's been chasing someone, is get the ball himself, push it forward, and make people chase him. Absolutely. 2,400 miles separating these two sides. Headed away by Say. Here's Juhas check. And now Sean Reynolds. Reynolds into the channel looking for McGrath. He was Juhas check, good defending there, sticking his boot out in front of McInerney. Yeah, Jack's either gonna have to stand him up and force a foul or get to the ball first. Yeah, There's a better spell here from Chattanooga. Weathered a little bit of a storm a few minutes ago, but now looking a little bit more comfortable and settled in. Well, I think they found out that they can get up the wings too. I mean, we've seen most of the routes already about, and Hines do a lot of the attacking along with Hoya. And now we've just seen on the left side, Raymond Lee take a, that push up uh, deep into Roots territory to try to get the ball over to the forwards, as well as Hofstetter. The number 10, so far, he hasn't been that much of an influence for Chattanooga. The forwards are doing a lot of running and banging, uh, but they're not getting a lot of service as of yet. Here is Hoya, now Harish. He does really well. Ball falls for Fondi, who tries to lay off for Harish. Yeah, Fondi would have been better to turn himself on that defender, make that defender challenge. He made it a little bit easier on the Chattanooga defense than he should have in that situation. Uh, but I'm starting to see a little bit more connection between Hoya and the two forwards. And now McGrath finds himself in a little bit of space. McGrath! And that one fizzes oh. wide. You mentioned they were pay playing the ball into that left channel. McGrath was about that same position again. Sharp angle, I would have been surprised if it went in, but it was a, a good move by Chattanooga. Well, as we said before in our chat with Peter Fuller before the game, he really likes Ian McGrath and what he can bring to his side. Plus, Either he's got a great name. Absolutely. I mean, you know, a combative midfielder, Ian McGrath, are you kidding? Perfect. Yeah, Chattanooga's definitely got uh, that first 20 minutes sorted out. They're, um, you can tell a little bit more the communication and the connections are, are starting, to, uh, starting to form. Now we'll have to see how fit they are, of course. We mentioned about the preseason. And these long disruptive. throws by Hofstadter as well, almost like a corner Whoa. looping in. Pushing foul on, uh, couldn't tell who it was. But you're right, Ridge, when Chattanooga gets into the final third and they do have a throw in deep inside Oakland's half here, they're going to use a longer throw and almost turnover. like a corner. There's another turnover right there. Here's Bmet. And now Mercano over the top Bmet. 
collected by Taylor Bailey. That was a good chance. Say made the jump, but he was too far away. He couldn't get his head on it. The header took a bounce and a save. Well, on his horse was Soren Juhaszczyk, because that was a fine ball from Robert Hines. Seems like we're mentioning his name quite a bit. He's uh, plugging up a lot of the stuff that uh, the Roots are trying to create. He's been very tenacious there so far. Yeah, and he's been with this Chattanooga side for a little bit. The Dutch defender. And has been one of the better defenders back there this evening for Chattanooga. Here's Mercano, tripped up in the turf. Now Harish, head down. On for Benji Hoya. Hoya and Fondi played together in Major League Soccer at the Chicago Fire. Fondi saying to us before this match that they were probably player number 12, 13, 14, and that they do have a rapport, they do have an understanding, and that right. when they've been at training in this team, They've been working on movement and having Hoya be able to place balls into the pathway of, of Fondi and kind of creating that classic number nine, number 10 partnership. Well, a very shrewd move by Jordan Farrell and the coaching staff to get those two guys back together because we can obviously see their talent is obvious even at this level. And if they can form a connection and get Jack McInerney, who's, like I said, more of, in my mind, more of a number nine type of a striker, uh, the Roots will um, they'll give teams problems up front, no question. Nil-nil the score so far between these two sides. Here's the goalkeeper, D'Amico. All the way out of the 18. And a push over the top there by McInerney on Jerry St. Ville. That's something referees are calling more and more. It's been, forwards got away with it for quite a while. Of course, I'm a goalkeeper, so I tend to uh, favor the defense at times. But you be, used to be able to back into a defender coming over your back, and the defender would always get the call. And the referees are a little tighter now on people backing into forwards, or, or defenders, excuse me, who are just going up for the ball, just playing the ball. Here's Ian McGrath, headed away by David Abador. He made a big play blocking that flicked header, too, because the Roots were uh, reacting a little bit slow to a quick ball played in from the outside. This is good stuff building out of the back from Chattanooga. On the turn, it's Sean Hofstetter. Still Hofstetter. Does well into the pathway of Agadello. Offside flag is raised. But if he had continued his run without passing the exactly. ball to Agadello. Exactly. There wasn't enough. That's another thing about the communication is just take it, leave it. You know, don't. I'm offside, but he didn't realize it was offside. If the attacker had noticed that, he would just take in the ball himself, and it was a good chance, Charles. You're absolutely right. Much, much better, though, from, from Chattanooga, and they've clearly settled in over the last 10 minutes or so, and you could tell they really wanted to play extremely quickly there, and so see if they can add to that. Now, Daniel Navarro on the right side for Hines. Closely defended by Raymond Lee. Hines, corner flag, throw in Chattanooga. When we were talking to Peter Fuller, he was uh, encouraged by coming out, first of all, when it wasn't pouring rain, and he liked the field. And he said, you know, we're going to try to play the ball on the ground because that's the, again, everybody says they want to play that style, and you have to have the players to do it. And he had to revamp his roster quite a bit from the jump to the professional level from NPSL. Uh, but they've shown they can play the ball to feet. They, uh, they're very happy, very comfortable on the ball. And after we said the first 20 minutes, you know, they might have had a little bit of better to play. Saintville clears away another Oakland throw in front of the mosaic stand on the far side. All of the stands are named a, a certain image or certain named with the symbolism of, of Oakland roots. Here, there's no specific section numbers at Laney College, so there's no 
I'm sitting in 105, I'm sitting in 106. You got Squad, you've got Mosaic, you've got the Sideshow off to our left. A uh, really brilliant atmosphere at, at Laney College that Oakland Roots have created. And it looks like the crowd has maybe arrived a little late and it looks like it's filled up pretty well. Uh, remember, next home game is next week. A lot of tickets available for that one. So if you didn't make it tonight, try to make it out for next week. The Michigan Stars come to Laney College. Here's Navarro to clear away. Brought down here by Hofstetter. And now Mercado. Reynolds. And I can hear Mercado saying, move it around, move it around, right. move it around. Definitely a sign of a, a team that's grown in confidence during the game and kept this at nil-nil in an atmosphere which is very pro-Oakland, obviously. Now they're showing a lot of patience now that they've kind of worked out the kinks of the first 20 minutes. So I think it's going to be a real test for the Roots. Uh, Chattanooga did most of the chasing the first 20 minutes, and it's been much more even since then. Here is Hoya on for Hines. Looking for Fondi. This is B Met. He's got a step on Say. Still B Met. Brian B Met. A lot of good work in that corner. Circling around. Playing into the feet of Jerry Saintville. His cross headed away by Daniel Navarro. But B Met still working very hard. His work rate up top. Coming back, collecting, making some tackles. Here's Mercano. And he's won himself a corner. Well, we had McGraw as kind of the real number eight box-to-box -box player, but the last 10, 15 minutes, you're right, Beamant has uh, taken on that role, and he's finding those seams. He's finding those cracks between the back line and the midfielders that uh, is pushing the roots back more and more into their final third. Here's Kyle Carr to take this corner. Raises both hands. Threads it oh, in. It's McGrath! Open. Oh, my gosh. McGrath! for Chattanooga FC, unmarked inside the area. No one was on him. And the man patrolling around central midfield, Ian McGrath, scores the first goal for Chattanooga FC. Oakland Roots nil, Chattanooga FC won. Well, that'll drive Jordan Farrell and his assistants crazy. A complete breakdown in the back line on a a nice corner kick, no question, played to the far post, but nobody anywhere near Ian McGraw. And obviously a blown assignment, and uh, Chattanooga takes the lead. Nice ball in from Kyle Carr, and nobody around him. He's on the edge of the six. Everybody's looking around. A nightmare for a coach and the goalkeeper. No chance at all for Bailey. Well, they were growing in confidence, Chattanooga. They weathered the storm for the first 15 or 20 minutes or so, but... We've seen them grow in confidence in, in front of us here. And a player like McGrath, who Coach Peter Fuller appreciates and enjoys and likes having him in his side, scores the first ever professional goal for Chattanooga FC. And what a big goal that is right off of the corner, unmarked. And they lead with just over 10 minutes to go here in the half. Remember, it was McGraw who had that shot like in the 14th minute, low past the far post. We were wondering, hadn't seen him a lot lately because B-Men was doing most of the box-to-box -box work wide open on a set play. And he makes no mistake, as they say. Here's Heredia on the ground. Oh, McInerney, save oh, made. Save. Phil D'Amico sprawling to his left. So the two best chances of the game in the last two minutes, that was an excellent save by Bill D'Amico. Heredia down the left, and again, McInerney, remember the, earlier in the game, he was bumped off the ball, he couldn't turn Hoyas cross in. This one, he put a good shot down low, down around the goalkeeper's feet. Goalkeepers a lot of time will have to try to kick that ball, but it's a little too far away, they have to get the hands down, and D'Amico did brilliantly, really, to there. Let's take another look at it right now. Yeah, that's a well-hit shot, and a very good save, and he recovers. No chance for Fani to get to the rebound. 
Kyle Carr on the ground, holding his head. As a trainer comes out to tend to him here. It was Kyle Carr's corner that led to that goal for Ian McGrath. And this midfield three for Chattanooga, putting together something special. Hofstadter as that number 10 attacking midfield player, Ian McGrath, the box to box, and Kyle Carr kind of patrolling in front of that back four and on the set piece as well. That was a good save, as I said, by D'Amico, and he had two defenders right there, so no way finally he was gonna get to it. So Chattanooga exposed for a second, the goalkeeper bailed him out, and then they slammed the door shut. And yeah, they've certainly kind of done their homework on McInerney and Fondy and their partnership thus far. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, almost a whole new team for the Roots, so I think that encouraging start is great, but now they have a setback. We'll see what they can do in the last 10 minutes of this first half. Here's Hoya over the top. Goalkeeper well heading the ball out to Miko. Another little flick, good connection up there. Say got there first. Throw in far side for Raymond Lee. In front of the mosaic stand, it's standing room only on that part of the stand as well. Here's Hoya. Great to see another great turnout here. Full house, it looks like. A little bit stunned by that goal, though. Hopefully the fans will pick it up once the Roots they get some momentum going. Be nice to go into a half 1-1 one, one at halftime, but uh, so far, they've kind of lost their uh, impetus after uh, Chattanooga got that goal. Here's Say. The native of Dakar, Senegal. Here's Abador. Now Harish Abador continuing his run. That was Hofstetter, the ostensibly attacking midfielder who tracked his opposite number coming up from midfield and got a tackle in and forced Oakland to commit the foul. So Chattanooga takes the ball back. D'Amico pointing to McGrath up top. I got some size, Chattanooga, especially in central midfield as well. Up in the air and brought down by Raymond Lee. Stolen by Hines. They want to get on with it, Oakland Roots. See if they can get an equalizer before the end of the half. Here's McInerney. Heredia. Pearson switching the field. Fans wanted a foul, none given. Hoya. And now Hines. Fondy waiting in the queue at that back post there. Nice steal. Harish. And now just zipping the ball around. Here's Hoya. out for a Chattanooga throw on that far side. The yeah, Abador came up and uh, a little bit of support like we talked about in the first 15, 20 minutes, both Navarro and Abador making very good passes into the midfield. I think what's happened is the Chattanooga is uh, really playing four in midfield and the three in midfield of the roots, uh, they're giving up possession and turnovers. Just simple, you know, numerical disadvantage. Have to make adjustments, slide somebody maybe like Heredia here. One of them may have to go more central so they can combat that lockdown that Chattanooga has in the middle. Here is Matt Fondy, Fondy, Harish, and then cleared away. That was a really nice sequence, just right up the gut. And so in that, they'd split the two midfielders in that case. Neither Carr nor McGraw could contain the middle, and a very closely a good chance for the Roots. Hoya's ball a bit wayward there. 
Well, that happens with a player like Hoy. If he doesn't get on the ball constantly, he gets a little bit off out of the rhythm and out of tempo. So they have to get back him, get him back going in as well. Let's give a shout out to the Roots' music partner, an Oakland neighbor, Pandora. You can listen to all the music and sounds from tonight's game by searching Oakland Roots in your Pandora app. Here's McGrath, the goal scorer. He's getting whistled for a high boot there. Didn't like it. And neither did Robert Hines. Yeah, Robert Hines didn't like it. And suddenly, this one is getting really chippy. Red card here. And I believe Robert Hines is going to be sent off. Well, that escalated very quickly. Very quickly, no question. Yeah, he put, uh, apparently, the referee must have thought he was a deliberate attempt to injure when he brought his foot up. And uh, I'd like to see the replay to know a little bit more about that situation. Hines is absolutely shocked. The fans here, obviously, against it. Um, Robert Hines just thought he was just scrapping for the ball with McGraw, and the referee's talking to McGraw as well. And we are gonna see a, a caution, right? Okay, well, let's see what goes on here. So McGraw gets the yellow, Hines is off with the red. And so the high boot, McGrath was upset. Hines grabs the ball. He stares down McGrath. McGrath and him having words with each other. And Hines... Definitely went into like a chest bump. I thought yeah. the referee may have thought it was a headbutt, and which is an, it was very automatic, soft. it was very soft. Yeah. And McGraw was definitely taunting him. That's why he got the yellow. So I can see why Hines is upset. I mean, he made me the motion of him, you know, is, is that was, if that constitutes a deliberate attempt to injure, deliberately headbutting someone, even though he didn't make much contact, um, the referee brought out the red. So harsh call in my opinion, but maybe Hines uh, just had to be a little bit more careful there. Harish chasing the ball down. So now Oakland down 1-0 here at their 2020 home opener. And now they have to play down a player. They're down to 10. So Robert Hines sent off here in the 42nd minute of this game. The goal scorer McGrath is booked. Here is Fondi, and now Pearson, ball over the top, looking for Hoya, can he get here? Get there? Yes, he can. And Jerry Saintville marshals that one out. So right now what's happened is Navarro has gone to the right back position to replace Hines, and we'll have to see with the Farrell's options on the subs, the bench, to see if he comes out, which 10 he comes out with, if he keeps playing four in the back instead of five, or makes another adjustment as well. Navarro in there, Say in there, Adebor in there, as well as Fondi. Could it fall here? Didn't get caught high enough. That was Lee as the first man. Just got a head on it. Heredia into the mix. Falls here, and it's Navarro! He did really well to get that glancing ball. The right foot set it up, but he couldn't really get it down quickly enough. And by the time he swung his left foot, into the path of the ball, he had to send it over the bar. So Navarro did well there to try to turn a half chance into a good chance, just got under it a little bit too much. Here's McGrath heading on here for Agadello. Agadello near the corner flag. I think he'll kill a little time unless he gets a big opening. Chattanooga can get to halftime 1-0, they'd be really thrilled. Fondi. And he is taken to ground and fouled. Matt Fondi, a bit of a social change agent here in Oakland as well, has a non-profit. Helping trying to end pay to play. Here is Daniel Navarro. 
Crossing the ball in, McGrath trying to head away. Free kick coming to Chattanooga. And Matt Fondy wearing the number 06 for Oakland Genesis. And he actually took a couple years off of playing soccer. He fell in and out of love with the game and Jordan Farrell had to kind of go, go get him, go pick him up in San Francisco and sit him down and say, hey, do you still want to have a go at this? And Matt Fondy said yes. And with all the social change and soccer that Oakland Roots are doing, that's an important thing that resonated with Fondy. And now Agadello in the area. And he's grabbing his ankle, I think, there for the tackle. And a, another corner upcoming here for Chattanooga. First minute of three of stoppage time. Chattanooga scored. It's goal on a corner, and the same uh, man who set it up, Kyle Carr, is heading over to take it again from the same corner. Kyle Carr to take in no rush. Three minutes of stoppage time here in this first half. Yeah, Chattanooga's got six in the box, so uh, they're definitely going to try to turn the set play into a goal. Carr, and the referee sees a push there. Reset, restart. And while we're on the subject of social change and, and soccer and using your club as a, as a movement to create social change, which both Oakland Roots and Chattanooga FC do, just a heads up. We're going to have an interview with Ricky Ramos from Street Soccer USA. We'll learn about Street Soccer USA and all of the great work that they do in the community and across the country. It is a national organization. Can't wait to tell you a little bit more about Street Soccer USA. Here is Kadeem Say into the feet of Pearson. And he's upended. Still 90 seconds, at least 90 seconds, so the Roots do have time. Hoya. And now... On the left side is Heredia, back for Hoya. Good interchanging play here. Navarro. Over the top, he was looking for McInerney. Good defending there. Now up into the air, and D'Amico is there. But without Hines, you have no right-sided presence. That would have been a great opportunity. Hoya kind of slides into the right channel, and a player out further out wide like Hines was playing, but. Down to 10, the Roots are going to be up against it. Really, you know, most pe people say free kicks and corner kicks are the best way to get goals, you know, set plays when you're down a man. And uh, the Roots will have another minute or so before they go to halftime and have to regroup 10 against 11. Here is Adebor, and now Hoya. a couple seconds remaining here in the stoppage time of this first half and cleared away by Raymond Lee. And Adebor, a little bit of a stronger header than Taylor Bailey would have expected. But at the break here, Chattanooga leads Oakland in the 2020 home opener for Oakland Roots. The header by McGrath off of the corner from Kyle Carr. Well deserved after they had a little bit of an up and down start to settle into the game Chattanooga. They do lead here and Ian McGrath scores a famous goal, the first ever professional goal for Chattanooga FC here at halftime. Robert Hines was sent off in the 42nd minute given a straight red card for a tussle with the goal scorer Ian McGrath right here at Laney College. We are going to go to the third member of our team, Callista Tyree, who's standing by with Chattanooga manager Peter Fuller. Yeah. And we're here with Coach Fuller, the Chattanooga FC head coach. Give us your thoughts on the first half, Coach. I thought it was uh, back and forth. Um, I think Oakland had us under it a little bit for that first uh, first probably 15 minutes. I think we were a little nervy. Um, they played some great stuff, a uh, little unlikely on a couple of them. And uh, uh, to be fair, I thought we got into it as the game went on. That middle of the half, I thought we were 
uh, got a little bit better, a little tighter uh, in terms of our shape. Um, started to get a little bit of possession of the ball and obviously a beautiful set piece with the Immigrass finish. So it's yeah. good. Any immediate changes coming in that you think you're going to make coming into the second half? Not really. Obviously, we'll prepare for what Oakland's going to do. They're down a goal and down a man. So yeah. they're going to make some changes and we've got to think about the what ifs but, uh, um, and, and manage the game. So they're going to come after us. They're in front of their home crowd and uh, uh, they're, it's, it's not going to be easy. Okay. Thank you so much for your words. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Callista. Those were the words of Peter Fuller, the leading head coach here at halftime for Chattanooga FC. Pandora is proud to be the presenting halftime sponsor of The Roots. Discover personalized music, podcasts, and more, all with Pandora. And if you want to relieve the magic of tonight, Remember to check out all the music and sounds from tonight's game by searching Oakland Roots in your Pandora app. So the fun, the games, the energy, it all continues live next here at Laney College as we get set for the halftime program. And at the break, Chattanooga leads Oakland Roots by a scoreline of a goal to nil. Every time I think of my family, my background, it keeps me working hard. I used to help my sister and my brother to give my mom some time and some space to help us get something to eat. After realizing that we're in a hard time, I moved with my father to a shelter in San Francisco. I didn't know people here except my dad and since I didn't know English, it was hard for me to start talking to people and studying. A few weeks later, my little brother got sick. The doctors didn't know what to do. They took him to the hospital. They kept giving him water and water and water until he passed away. At that moment, I was about to give up from school and my dad told me I need to remember where I'm from, to keep my head up, to get into college, to try to help others who are trying to fight for their lives. A few months later, my friends invited me to come to the park with them during their practice. Coach Ben invited me to join them. Street soccer teach me to look up. Looking up is to see the players, looking up for opportunities and being open for everything you can get to succeed. Street Soccer has helped me to make friends. Having friends really helps you open your mind and enjoy learning. My big goal is to become a doctor. My little brother passed away, but I still can help him. I want to support my people, my family, my country. You know, anything is doable. If you have your communities and <laughs> street soccer is my community. They're part of me, part of my life, part of my family. It's halftime, Chattanooga FC leading the Roots by a score of one to nothing. A good start by the Roots, but Chattanooga took control midway through the first half and got their goal in the 32nd minute by Ian McGrath on a corner kick set up by Kyle Carr. This is the first year professional soccer for Chattanooga, and they've uh, shown quite a bit here in the first half, their first professional game after moving up from the NPSL. We're going to be having an interview in just a minute how the rookie Ramos 
and Charles Wolin will be interviewing Ricky Ramos of Street Soccer USA. So a little bit of the activities going on here. Halftime at Laney College. Glad you're with us on OaklandRootsSC.com for NPSL, for NAI, NAISA action, excuse me. And here we go with Charles Wolin and Ricky Ramos. Ramos from Street Soccer USA, a phenomenal organization that, that branches out in multiple, multiple facets. But for folks that don't really know a lot about Street Soccer USA, uh, how long have you been involved in, and tell us a little bit more about the organization. Yeah, great, thanks Charles. Excited to be here at the Oakland Roots season opener. Uh, I've been with the Street Soccer USA for about four years here in Oakland. We have chapters all across the US, as you mentioned, and we're a soccer nonprofit that uses the beautiful game of soccer to help connect individuals, homeless adults, refugees, low income youth to the game and then develop the life skills that go along with it. So maybe it's getting a job, maybe it's staying sober, maybe it's graduating high school, but we're using soccer as a way to get into these communities and then helping them achieve their goals outside. Social change and soccer together, my friends. Now, Ricky, here specifically in Oakland and how the roots have kind of come up from the grassroots, you've also developed a program to work hand in hand uh, with this club day in and day out and with some of the players as well that specifically work within Street Soccer USA's uh, social programs. Yeah, definitely. So we've got a great partnership with The Roots since they've launched. Um, their players come out and support our programs, as you mentioned, but what's great is just being able to provide the community with access to come to these games, provides inspiration for the youth to see there's an opportunity to take soccer to the next level in Oakland. Um, we have players out in the community, four from The Roots right now, hoping to get more, um, but they're at practices every afternoon, um, working in the communities with elementary schoolers, middle schoolers, high schoolers. Um, and we're doing great work helping to build a community club right now. So some of these Roots players are teaching them the ins and outs of what it takes to get to the next level in soccer. That is phenomenal and it's also amazing. How would you say that someone can get involved in Street Soccer USA and are there any plans to continue to build out chapters across the country? Great question. Um, so we are currently developing a street league. It's a citywide street league here in Oakland with chapters all across the U.S. And there's great opportunities to come in and volunteer your time to help support some of the games we have going on on the weekends. Um, if you can connect to sponsors to you know, support youth in their development or individual neighborhoods or teams on their growth in this street league competition, um, it's what brings together our national cup. And um, there's opportunities for your name to be impactful here in the community and, and across the country. And the National Cup is a, is a lot of fun. I've had the chance to commentate uh, a couple of National Cups as well. Cups in big major cities across the country. Times Square, uh, Civic Center Plaza uh, in San Francisco at LA Live in Los Angeles and in, and in Sacramento. There's a Street Soccer Sacramento chapter as well. So log on to streetsoccerusa.org uh, for more information. Um, Ricky Ramos, Charles Wolin here with you at halftime uh, of Oakland Roots and at Chattanooga FC. Uh, Chattanooga leads this game by a goal to nil. We'll see you for the second half in a little bit. Take care, thank you. I'm really excited to be a part of EBCE because of all the opportunities it will offer me to save money. I was surprised to find out that I could actually have a choice about where my energy comes from. Thanks to EBCE, our kids are going to have a clean planet to live on when they're older. I need the power to work in my studio. Of course, I'd love to be able to use more renewable energy. We now have choices, and I'm happy to choose East Bay Community Energy as my source for local clean power. Dr. Roth, thank you so much for talking to me today. This facility in particular has something really unique and special. It has an urgent care that deals only in orthopedic issues. It's a hard task for a regular urgent care or an ER 
to be able to do everything. They have to be able to manage chest pain, they have to be able to manage an ingrown toenail, and so we figured that why don't we just open up our own urgent care just for these exact kinds of injuries. I feel inspired now to go get my knee lifted at this <laughs> so point. Many times. But, uh, thank you so much. No problem. Thanks a lot. East Bay Community Energy was created by 11 cities in Alameda County and is now saving customers $10 million a year by providing cleaner energy at low rates. Green money in your wallet, green power in your outlet. Oh, they're throwing out T-shirts there on the mosaic stand on the far side opposite our broadcast gantry ridge. They're hoping for a goal in the second half, and they're getting uh, they're getting fired up on that on that far side there. The music and the party never really stops here when these games go on. I mean, it's just a phenomenal, wonderful atmosphere. And if you haven't had the chance to to be at a game yet for Oakland Roots, and if you can can come to Laney College to see this thing, you got to stop on by. Well, it's next, brilliant. Next Saturday at 5, 10 p.m., Michigan Stars come to Laney College for the second week of the season, and then the Roots will not be here again until early April. So uh, next week will be a good one here against Michigan Stars. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first half highlights here couple fans having a good local beverage early. Here come the Roots. They're jetting out to the field. Having a couple juggles as well. Getting their touches in. There's the first ball. A chance there. Bailey had to come out in a good catch. Um, Chattanooga's pressure did come through the air the first couple times. And as we'll see in a couple minutes, they did score on a header. Here's the Barbie, the best chance for the Roots. Robert Hines the second, who was later red carded, heading just over the bar in a nice feed from Heredia. So the Roots with a better team, but here's Kyle Carr. And look at that, wide open. Ian McGrath heads it in. You can see the flapping of arms. That always happens to defenders. Nobody picked up the man who was uh, the target of the ball. And Chattanooga, against the run of play a little bit, Took a 1-0 lead, and then later in the half, good save there, getting down low on D'Amico on a shot by Jack McInerney. So two good chances for the Roots. They couldn't put one away, and then here's the, what happened just before the halftime. A little altercation there from goal scorer McGraw, Robert Hines. That's constituted as a chest bump or a head bump, a deliberate attempt to injure, and that's a red card, and the Roots are down to 10. McGraw did get a caution on the play, but it's the Roots who have the man disadvantage for the second half. So we're all set here for the second half. It should be underway as both teams walking out in their respective huddles and getting ready for the second half. 45 seconds or so here on our stadium clock here at Laney College, the home of the 2018 state community college football champions as well. We'll be right back in just a second. Welcome back to Laney College here. Charles Wolin, Ridge Mahoney with you on the call. This is the first ever professional match for Chattanooga FC and their first ever NISA match for Oakland. They're looking for their first win, but they're gonna have to do it with 10 men as Robert Hines was sent off and they're down a goal due to the header from Ian McGrath in that first half. I haven't been informed yet of any changes made at halftime by either team, but uh, we'll catch up with that. We came out of that uh, break kind of quickly. Um, but uh, as Charles told you, uphill slog now for the Roots, down to 10 at home, but playing against a Chattanooga team that grew in confidence quite a bit after a shaky start for the first half. There is one change. Nana Atacora comes into the game here for Daniel Navarro. 
Anacora, who had two stints at the San Jose Earthquakes and won the NASL Championship just two and a half years ago with SF San Francisco Deltas. And he was the captain there for that team as well. And Raymond Lee down just outside the edge of the 18 there. And there's going to be a throw in deep in Oakland's half. Taken almost like a corner from Hofstadter. Hofstadter, it's McGrath, he flicks on. Well, he was looking for Brian Bement. Here is Bement. Bement back to his left, Bement, and cut out nicely by Kadim Say. Jadakar will join Say in the middle and uh, then shifting out to the right-hand side will be Abador. Well, we did expect Nana Adakora to start this evening, but he is in the game here in this second half. This is Matt Fondi, Harish. Lovely stuff here by the Roots and cut out again by Yuz Hoscheck. And again, Yuz Hoscheck has been defending really well this evening for Chattanooga. Benji Hoya now. Here's Peter Pearson, who last played at Tormenta, a team also in the southeastern part of the country in USL League One. Here's McInerney. Headed away by Yuz Hoscheck. Bement, headed away by Anakora. All the way back to the goalkeeper, Taylor Bailey. So now we'll have to see if the Roots, you know, really kind of play with three in the back, because already it was playing a, a midfield position, and they don't have a left-sided player anymore now. So he's going to have to do double duty. Hines was doing quite a bit of that, pushing forward and playing as a, an outside defender, and that's what Heredi is going to have to do on the left. So that's going to sap the Roots of some of that uh, attacking presence they had in midfield with Heredia pushing up. Ball over the top. Here's Bement. Atacora falls down. He may have been shoved or pushed a little bit. Weather update, cloudy, 52 degrees. Wind at 20 miles per hour and humidity at 63%. I'm not sure where our team got that from, but appreciate them for providing that to us. I think it's gusting a little higher than 20, <laughs> but uh, we'll see how that <laughs> unfolds during the... <laughs> it was a, a, incredibly windy uh, during warm-ups, pre-games. So uh, I, I haven't noticed too much an effect on balls played in the air, but I'm sure the players are aware of it. Here's Pearson. Agadello asking for the foul. Gets back up. Harish. Previously played at the San Francisco Glens last summer over on the other side of the bay. Crossed in by Heredia, looking for McInerney. Could it fall for Fondi? Can he get there? Yes, he can, just for a second, but Raymond Lee does well to recover. Still Lee on the left side. Raymond Lee, Bement, and Anacora. Well, the last pe pass let Lee down, but we saw him push up a couple times in the first half. Got some good skill, and uh, the Roots really haven't been able to contain him, but here's Hoya with some good stuff. Lee pulled the jersey, and yes, we're going to have a, a foul and a card. Yellow card there for Raymond Lee for the shirt tug on Benji Hoya.
He's going to take this free kick as well. The Oakland number 10. Maybe here in the background, fans exhorting Hoya to play in a good ball. Want to get some offense going now for the Roots. Raises his left hand. He's got Harish. He's got Fondi. Goalkeeper comes out to punch D'Amico. And it's going to be a corner now for the Roots. That ball, the wind definitely had an effect on that one. You could see it kind of curl and twist at the end, but I thought D'Amico did really well to track it all the way and get a fist on it. Quickly taken by Harish. Here he is. Hoya. And now Pearson. Still got numbers forward, Oakland. Hoya. Lots of time and space for him there. Trying to float that into the channel for McInerney and then cleared away. But with a man down, the Roots still has to be cautious about committing too many players forward. It's only a 1-0 game. And you saw Hoya, he had a lot more options in the first half when they were playing 11 against 11. And really, unless Heredia pushes up on the left, besides the two forwards, there aren't too many options for Hoya, for Hoya unless um, they decide to really commit numbers forward. That would include Pearson and maybe even Abador on the right, from the right back position that he's taken up now. Hoya looking for Heredia. Can he get there? A push. And the AR saw it. But again, the offside flag is raised. I thought Heredia timed that pretty well. I was surprised to see the flag go up on that. But it did go up. So the Roots have lost it. We look at a good run from Heredia. Who's like going to have to play a little deeper now. They're playing four in the back. So it's really going to take a toll on him. I don't know if uh, how many of the Roots players are 90 games fit. I guess we'll find out tonight when you're down to 10. Here is McGrath heading on. Atacora is there. And Atacora slotting in nicely, coming on as a center back at half. Not an easy thing to do to replace a center back at half, but again, he's the, the guy they'd like to provide some leadership in the back line this year. So it might seem to be a strange sub to change a defender, but you're going to need to take more chances. So you want your most experienced defender, which Akora obviously is, anchoring the middle, and you'll just have to take your chances when you make your other subs to get more attacking uh, forays up front. Here's McInerney running this down in front of Jerry St. Ville. Ville, and he's protesting with the referee there. They wanted to take it quickly. Well, DeVille showed good patience there. He know he doesn't have McInerney's speed, so he let McInerney collect the ball at his feet, and then, you know, maybe a 50-50 tackle, didn't get the call, but here it is again, and now it's another foul that's set up. So he comes in. Clips McInerney in the back of the heel, so the referee blew the whistle. Benji Hoya now to serve the ball in. For Oakland. Say is in there, McInerney. Anabor, Nana Anacora. Anacora and Juhaszczyk having some words and pushing each other. Center back versus center back. Well, he drew the drew the mark on Natakora. And uh, like we say, uh, down to 10, this is probably the best chance on a set play for the Roots to get back in the game. And his Benji Hoya. Not the best service there, here's Harish. Trying to get Natakora to flick it on, but it didn't connect. Hoya for the back post there for Fondi. Headed on by Anacora and then hoofed away by Agadello. Funny, trying to knock it back for McInerney, but uh, Chattanooga had a lot of players back. Again, the reset after the free kick, they held their lines. They didn't push out too quickly, and they made the clearance, but the Roots still have possession in the Chattanooga half. Here's Heredia. And now Kadim Say. Harish, lots of space and time on the ball here, Johannes Harish. 
for Fondi. Fondi now working his way through and Saintville back on the ball, stolen back by Harish, his work rate. Impressive in this game. Well, we're gonna need that in the second half, most question with that man at disadvantage. Here's David Abador. Ball kind of put in that no man's land place, but the goalkeeper, D'Amico, read that really well. well. He had a defender flashing in front of him of two, but luckily at the last minute, I think it was Juhascha crossed in front of him. He kept his eye on the ball and made a clean catch. A fumble in that position would have been disastrous. He wanted an obstruction call against Fondi, but no call was coming and the Roots get possession. Here's Abador. And now Hoya. Looking for that return run of Fondi. Kyle Carr. McInerney. Good bit of possession here for Oakland Roots and down a man chasing the game. And Chattanooga is okay sitting back a little bit here in this second half. And apart from that half chance with that ball over the top by Hoya towards Fondi, that's been the best chance of the second half thus far for this Oakland Roots team. Abidor. We're on the opposite side from the benches, so, but I did see somebody on the roots take off their training penny, so I wouldn't be surprised if we have a, at least one sub coming up very quickly for Oakland. Here's Pearson. And now Heredia. Looking for Fondi, chested down. Lots of experience, Matt Fondi, MLS, USL Championship for Louisville, for NCFC. Last played in the summer for SF City FC. Left his job in San Francisco to create his own nonprofit soccer organization and play for the Oakland Roots. Anacora over the top for Fondi. Saintville. Defending him very closely, and now Heredia. Heredia into the feet of Jack McInerney, the goalkeeper. D'Amico does really well. Second big save by D'Amico on McInerney. That was a wonderful play set up by Fondi's kind of weaving run through midfield, and then a quick through ball, which we talked about Jordan Farrell. He loves those Carlos Valderrama-esque through balls that you like so much, <laughs> and set up a great chance, but D'Amico was very quick down, Made an excellent save. So Hoy is coming out. It looked like he may have faded a bit. You know, Dan down to 10 minutes. He had to do a lot more work defensively as well as try to use his offensive skill. So he's the second sub so far tonight. Ariel Mumba now in the match for Benji Hoya. He'll patrol around that central midfield and he hands the captain's armband to Nana Atakora. Mumba is the youngest player on the squad coming from De Anza Force Development Academy. He was born in Congo and raised in the South Bay. And that's a connection we expect to see quite a bit of uh, with Paul Bravo, who was co the head coach here last year, uh, head of coaching at De Anza Force. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a cross bay pipeline uh, that comes into work for the Roots as the seasons unfold here. Here is Hofstetter. Throw in here for Raymond Lee. Had a 
Monica Kaur. winning that ball again. She's definitely been a presence out there. Yeah, when we chatted with him, he said his best thing is organization. He's very talkative in the back line. He kind of likes to direct the orchestra in the back, and especially in the system, they want to play with five defenders, two outside wingbacks getting up and down. It's crucial to have a player of his caliber that's able to shout things back there. Ball over the top for Fondi, headed away by St. Ville. And Adekor will be especially uh, needed because of, you know, the disadvantage as well as what we saw he'll be up there on set plays as well so he's got a he's a really an all-around player well known as a center back of course but incredible experience in mls as well as other leagues Atacora actually said he spent more time here in oakland in 2017 when he played for the san francisco deltas than in san francisco so he said he really appreciated being part of this project, one of his favorite projects. Ball over the top here. Agadello chasing. And Adakora cleaning up. Yeah, Say did the work to scuff the ball away, and Adakora was there to prevent the corner and put the roots into another, uh, another attack up this side. Here's Abidor. Kept in here nicely by Brian Bement. And Abador, I think, is starting to feel the effects of playing 10 against 11. I don't know if he's going to be able to continue with the right back slot too much longer. Maybe have to move him inside or um, get somebody else out there. He's definitely getting leggy. Just a little bit leggy. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, and he's shouting here at Ariel Mumba in central midfield, asking him to cover him if he's going to get up and down that right side as well. Chattanooga in no rush to take this. Throw in on the far side in front of the mosaic stand. And the shot came in by Bement. The goalkeeper got his hand to it, Taylor Bailey, and it's going to be a corner here for Chattanooga. Both hands raised from Kyle Carr. It's McGrath again. And McGrath beats his fists on the turf there. He had a sliver of space. He got to the ball first again. Uh, nobody fronted him, and nobody was there to intervene. Um, looks like he had a good look at it, but he couldn't hit the target this time. But he's already done it once, and that's why the Roots are trailing by a goal. Here is Harish. He's wearing the number 91 from the year that Eritrea gained independence. They left Eritrea at age 12. Here come and the fans. Grew up here in Oakland. Coming. Here we go. Getting and that chant going. Here comes the Let's Go Oakland chant. Here's Mumba. A rusty touch there for Mumba, first touch. Put the ball on the floor, could have done something with it. Raymond Lee for Agadello. Lee, who last played at Hartford Athletic and had a stint with Philadelphia Union as well, so has MLS experience. Lee chested down around central midfield. And off of the half volley, just wanted to thread that one, ping it around central midfield, looking for Agadello. And that's what they're doing, Chattanooga. Not settling for one. They'd like to have two, especially up a man. If you're just joining us, Robert Hines the second was sent off in the 42nd minute for Oakland, just before the end of the half. And so even though on your screen it doesn't say that Oakland's playing with 10, they are. Here's McInerney. And now Abador. 
but Oakland's possessed well in this second half, a little bit better than actually in the first half. Uh, well, towards the end of the first half, it was really Chattanooga's game, and they carried the game quite a bit. But the problem with playing 10 against 11, it's really hard to thread your way through a team. Ball sent in for Fondi. Second ball won here by Mumba. Jack McInerney putting his hands out, saying to his teammate, hey, I'd like to have that at my feet instead. Wants it earlier, and that's the question with the Roots. Yes, they are a possession team, and they're knocking the ball around, but Chattanooga has the man advantage, so they're closing spaces down. So a ball like that to McInerney, that's going to be effective, but there has to be another connection. McInerney's kind of the focal point. He has to come so far away from goal. As we talked about earlier in the game, there were some times when he and Fondi seemed to be on the same page, but without Hoya there, um, they've been more and more isolated now. And Chattanooga's, I think, figured out a little bit more about what McInerney likes to do and the spots that Fondi wants to occupy. And you see him talking to Mumba. Okay, where are we going now? What are we going to do with this in the last uh, you know, 24 minutes of the game? Heredia, and now Mumba. Tripped up by Hofstetter there. Atacora, nice, nice diagonal, a proper center backs ball out to a winger. And Oakland's want to throw. Bement. And the referee stopping play, having words with Harish. As Bement sent right into the scores table on the far side. Again, BMET used to play at Ford Madison, played at Jacksonville Armada and Puerto Rico FC, so knows the occasion, knows lower league soccer pretty well in the old NASL. Headed on by McGrath, and he is the target man up there for this Chattanooga team, and has the goal for Chattanooga. In the 33rd minute, Agadello, Bement, and Atacora was there. And the offside flag raised. And a restart, and a substitution now coming for Oakland. And Harish will be, excuse me, Pearson will be withdrawn. And Manny Gonzalez will take his place. So, Peter Pearson, the man that featured at Tormenta last year and plays in a holding midfield position for Oakland, replaced by Manny Gonzalez. Who last played with Tulsa Roughnecks, originally from Fort Lauderdale. Agadello tripped up and a restart now coming for Chattanooga. They haven't changed anybody yet, but I see a couple of substitutes on the far side warming up. Now Peter Fuller's playing this very shrewdly. Got that goal, he's up a man. Very, uh, I would say cautious, but careful approach now for Chattanooga. They don't want to give up anything on the break and they're uh, causing problems around the edge of the box for the Roots. Flag is up again for offside. He's going to make two changes, it looks like, as well.
So Chattanooga will make their changes now. It appears that Nick Spielman and Topher Marshall will come into the game now. And as you can see here on the far side, the fans absolutely approve. So Topher Marshall for Brian Bement. And the goal scorer, Ian McGrath, comes off for Nick Spielman. Spielman from Melbourne, Florida, last played at East Tennessee State. And Topher Marshall from Lawrenceville, Georgia, from Oglethorpe University, and Taylor Bailey right off of his line. Had to be odds on there, as he had two Chattanooga players right on top of him to make that save. Well, McGrath, you have to say, put in a pretty good shift. Uh, that 70 minutes got the goal, did a lot of the work to help Chattanooga regain some, some cohesion in midfield after a shaky start, and of course, you know, maybe goaded, this is the word. He really taunted Robert Hines, and Hines took the bait and was sent off. And uh, so McGrath, I'm sure, was the villain in the eyes of the Oakland Roots uh, fans here tonight, but uh, he definitely gave an excellent performance. And there's a big reason Chattanooga has the lead on the road in this NISA opener for both teams. Yeah, McGrath was excellent for sure. Ball over the top from Atacora. He was looking there for Fondi. And D'Amico again, no problem for him. The Orlando, Florida native. The ball popped right up back into the air. That's the second time that's happened in this half. Here's Atacora. Abador's diagonal out for a throw. Going to be another substitution here for Oakland. Yeah, Abador's out. As we said, you saw that last pass. That was a fatigue pass. He really ran himself out, having to move to the outside after starting the game centrally when the Quirks went down to, the Roots went down to 10 men. Josiah Romero now in the game here. Last played at Holy Names, and he's from San Jose. Also today, the San Jose Earthquakes got a injury time equalizer from Osvaldo Alanis in the home opener for the San Jose Earthquakes just down the road from here. Here's Matt Fondi looking to win a corner. And he does. Excellent work by the Oakland striker. Well, there's Mumba taking the place of Hoya. Remember, who was substituted. Hoya takes most of the corners from the right side, and uh, Mumba, with a left foot, presents a different ball, probably an in-swinger. Well, final 15 minutes. Here is Mumba. Mumba to take. Punched away there by D'Amico. That was one of the few shaky moments tonight for D'Amico. That was a ball he definitely should have cleared and kept in play, but instead it goes back to the roots. Well, that second corner quickly taken, and it's a throw. Harish waiting for McInerney to get into the area. And away by Topher Marshall. Here's Josiah Ramiro. Looking to win a corner still. And good shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder defending by Raymond Lee. So inside the last 15 minutes for Oakland Roots to try to get an equalizer or more, or for Chattanooga to add on to what they have McGrath, the goal scorer, withdrawn just a few minutes ago. A 
It's an awkward ball for Kadim Say, but he deals with it. Here's Manny Gonzalez. And now Angel Heredia. And as Romero playing the right back slide pushed up very high now. So it's really almost a three in the back for the Roots. They're trying to get more players in midfield and in support of their forwards, Fondi and McInerney. It's Marcano on this right side, Ryan Marcano. Another sub for Chattanooga as they try to batten down this 1-0 uh, lead. Yeah, Caleb Jackson going to make his way into this game, last playing at Tormenta FC, the native of St. Louis. They'll take the place of Santiago Agadello. Headed away. Another Chattanooga throw on the far side. Uh, let's remind people, Nisa does permit five substitutes, just in case you're learning. They don't follow the international rules of just three subs per game. So uh, they're not playing it fast and loose here. That's uh, something about the Nisa game. A little bit more liberal use of subs. Caleb Jackson still. Caleb Jackson! Took advantage of some tired defending there. A couple of Roots had chances to get the ball out, particularly Say. Anacora with a, an opportunity as well. He stuck with it, though, and uh, forced Bailey to collect. Yeah, it's always nice to bring on a fresh striker as well. Here's Topher Marshall on for Caleb Jackson. Caleb Jackson! <laughs> and it's just wide. Yeah, that's a ball you have to put on the frame. I mean, you saw the angle if you're on the... the Bailey was in a good spot, but uh, Jackson was in close enough. He could have picked either spot. Always good to go low to the far post, which he did. Pulled it about a yard wide, much as McGraw did early in the first half uh, when the game was 0-0. So that down to 10 men has really cost the Roots possession. And um, you know, Chattanooga opening them up occasionally in the second half with uh, you know, the opportunities for the second goal that would probably kill off this game. Here is Kadim Say, Harish. Mumba. Asking his right back, Josiah Ramiro, to play a little closer to him. Ball won here by Kyle Carr. You should mention Carr, too. He's another player that kind of regained his footing after a shaky opening, set up the goal with that corner kick, of course, but uh, has done a good job, I think, uh, destroying a lot of what the Roots have been trying to get through the midfield. Again, the Roots started off with just three midfielders against four and then went down to ten men. But uh, Carr's been very strong. Um, head coach Peter Fuller, as we said, wasn't sure which guys were going to be 90-minute fit. Helps when you're playing a man up for most of the game, but uh, Carr is one of the ones who I think is going to finish very strong. Kadim Say. Romero stolen here by Lee and then cleared away by Nana Atacora. Souvenir City. And that's that veteran defensive energy coming into the fray here in this second half. And you're right, Ridge, talking about that midfield three of, of Carr and McGrath, Sean Hofstadter. They seem to have a good understanding of one another in this Chattanooga side and was kind of hinting towards it in the first half after they kind of figured things out. But they're also big lads too. Uh, and, and they may have had a bit of a size advantage uh, as well to be able to kind of dictate in, in central midfield during this game. Well, it really worked out bad for the Roots, but good for them because they were worried about their fitness levels. And when you're playing a man up, uh, you don't do nearly so much running. So they've done a pretty good job uh, in the second half. A few opportunities for the Roots, but uh, you know, Chattanooga is not going to let this slip away easily. It's going to have to be an excellent goal for the Roots to get the equalizer. Ramiro was looking for Fondi there. And Fondi going one way, but the ball going the other. Anacora wins another ball in the air. You can see that experience and that uh, 
he'll be a real great addition to this Roots team once he gets fully healthy. He can, uh, you know, give you 90 minutes every game. Yeah, absolutely. And also a, a captain, a vice captain, can provide leadership. Turnover right there. Could have been something there for Chattanooga. And they're just looking to see out the last 10 minutes of the game. The attendance for this game, mind you, is 5,000. 603 here at Laney College for this game. Here's Jerry Saintville. And Caleb Jackson was making the run, but again, who else? Nana Atakura making that tackle. Well, it's unfortunate he had to make his debut um, you know, when the team down a man came on in the second half. Uh, I think. Oakland Roots fans will be happy to see him out there. That leadership, that experience is going to be valuable. Don't know much how much we can do tonight, of course. He's going to be good on a set play if they can get another corner free kick. Maybe Adekor will be the target. Here's Lee for Topher Marshall. Heredia. Gonzalez. Fondi on the turn. Still Fondi out to Josiah Ramiro. Can he find some space? McInerney. Mumba. His ball for Heredia mm, and was, over his head. Everything was great about that setup, and but Mumba just couldn't deliver the pass accurately enough because Heredia would make a long run up from the left back spot, but he didn't really get close to it. Another substitution, Fondy off. Wilfred Williams, number three, coming in for the Roots. See if he can uh, get something going up front. Last played at Orlando City B in USL League One from Monrovia, Liberia. Throw in on the far side, come in here. In the 84th minute of this game, Chattanooga, their goal from Ian McGrath off of a corner from Kyle Carr. Red car to Robert Hines just before the end of the first half. Here's Caleb Jackson on for Raymond Lee. Onto his left, Raymond Lee! Great save there by Taylor Bailey. Well, he got the shot in, but Adekora did everything he could to push Lee to his left, wider and wider. A very tight angle there, but a good shot. Bailey had to make the save. And uh, again, Chattanooga can take their time on this corner. But Lee, some nice work. Adekora doesn't have much help inside, forces him outside, but that was going in. Keeper made an excellent save. Oh, well, Kyle Carr to take. Kyle Carr's ball punched away there by Bailey. Harish. And he's fouled by Nick Spielman. Ball by Gonzalez looking for Romero, handled by Lee, and now Chattanooga with a little bit of possession, but stolen by Gonzalez, and now a free kick coming One of for several, Oakland. Several fouls, frankly, in the last uh, 10, 15 minutes of Chattanooga's committed in midfield. They're not going to take any risks. If the Roots look like they've got anything going, they'll just take the foul. St. Ville. Final five minutes here, plus stoppage time for Oakland. Chasing an equalizer. Chattanooga just looking to see the game through. Reynolds. Out 
Matakora for Heredia. Throw in going Oakland's way now. And maybe some pushing and shoving. Oh. Well, there's a bit of a spill there from Gonzalez jumping over the sideboards to win back the ball to throw in. McInerney dispossessed. Lee. Lee, who played for Peter Fuller at Philadelphia Union. There's Caleb Jackson fighting and scratching away to try to win back the ball and his energy has kind of stifled this back line a little bit. Cleared away by Anacora. Let's take a quick look here at Jordan Farrell on the Roots bench. He just got back from Miami after finishing his A license, so he did, was unable to train with the team all week. So put things together very quickly. Of course, Anacora couldn't go as a starter. So a, kind of a rough debut for Jordan Farrell in his first game as a head coach. He was the assistant last year, obviously, to Paul Bravo. Uh, but, you know, just one game and uh, lots of work to do. Another good crowd. That's positive. Uh, but Jordan Farrell has made a, quite a few roster renovations, and uh, so I'm sure he didn't want to go down to 10 tonight. Be interested to get his reactions uh, or after the game and see what he does uh, for the next week in training. <laughs> Here is Mumba. Yeah, straight off the airplane and right into training. Harish chasing. He's put in a really, really good effort this evening. Here's Lee. Lee looking to go to the corner. And Chattanooga wins a free kick. And he's been one of several Chattanooga players who really raised their game after a difficult start. Raymond Lee has been a real problem coming up the left flank when it was 11 against 10. And I thought, um, again, it was a, a shaky start, but once Chattanooga kind of settled into the game, he was one of many players, along with McGraw, Paul, Kyle Carr, a few others who, um, they've been the best players on the field here tonight. Here is Lee. Chips the ball up into the air. Flag stays down. Shoulder to shoulder. Gonzalez looks to clear, and he's upended. A minute and stoppage time to go here. Now or never for the Oakland Roots. Had a difficult time in 2019. We're not able to win a game in the league. A few ties and a few losses, and again, did a bit of a squad overhaul. Here's Caleb Jackson on a breakaway. It's Caleb Jackson, save made. Wonderful save by Taylor Bailey. Well, Caleb Jackson could have just finished the game right there. And here comes Oakland, the crowd likes it. Last push perhaps, last minute of regulation. Out of Cora. He'll take the free kick there and lob it upfield, get it upfield quickly. Mumba. On for Manny Gonzalez. Overlapping run by Wilfred Williams. And it looks like it's going to be a roots corner here. That was a substitute, Williams. Those fresh legs from the left back position. Did his job, got the corner. Four minutes of stoppage time. Fans probably delighted to see that. It's going to be taken by Johannes Harish. It's Josiah Romero. And he just can't quite get that right there. He Josiah Romero. He jumped a little Romero. bit too soon. He's trying to hang in the air. The ball was coming down so slowly. By the time it did come down, he had already started to drop, and he couldn't put it on the frame. Here is Caleb Jackson, and there's a handball there. So again, a 
restart for Oakland. Played the first minute of stoppage time. Three to go here. And now Ryan Mercano, who's also had an industrial, industrious game, excuse me, at Excellent kind of right adjective wing, there, Charles. Ring, right wing <laughs> back. Right. <laughs> well, my adjectives are yeah. not as good as yours, Ridge, so well, you know, we raise our game together here. Blue collar lunch pail guy, you want to, <laughs> however you want to put it, but no, yeah. he, he's putting his a good shift as we can just keep the cliches coming. But, uh, but that's the kind of spirit you want to see in a team that didn't have a great preseason, has a lot of roster yeah. turnover, and a new head coach. Uh, they've got to be thrilled if they hold on to this lead with you know, their long, long trip out west, 2,500 miles, you said? Yeah, um, you know, absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. I've been impressed by them. I really have been. Yeah. And they kind of get it. And this could be some result for them in their first professional match this evening. And the goal again by Ian McGrath, separating these two teams. Red card to Robert Hines. Here is Jack McInerney. Still McInerney! Jack McInerney! He leaves off from 2019 and he leaps into 2020. Six goals last season and he's got a goal tonight. Oakland won, Chattanooga won, Jack McInerney in stoppage time. Absolutely deserved today for the Roots. They had to go down to 10 for more than a half in the third minute of four minutes of stoppage time. Jack McInerney stopped twice by D'Amico, once in each half, gets a ball to his feet in the final seconds, and he slots it past D'Amico for a 1-1 tie. It was a direct ball out of the back. The Roots had been trying to play their possession game, maybe a little bit too much, down to 10 men. They went long ball, and McInerney was right there to turn a chance into the goal. Oh, he's given a yellow card there for his troubles and his celebration. They'll take the shirt off by Jack. I don't think anybody else is going to mind except for the referee. And look at the celebration here at Laney College, the equalizer. We were just chatting about Chattanooga seeing if they could get this result and that ball over the top really something out of nothing and McInerney stuck his foot out and got it but here comes Chattanooga well we talked about uh, Chattanooga showing some perseverance on the road and really responding and getting the goal before they went up a man. But give a credit to the Roots. They were plugging away all game, had to move all their substitutes, Jordan Farrell, right off the plane from his uh, licensing course in Florida. And uh, this will make that long trip home and maybe a few sleepless nights really worth it. Listen to this crowd, they're really, really celebrating. It is let's go Oakland over and over and over again here in Oakland where East Oakland and West Oakland meet right here at Laney College. Kind of dead central right in the middle of this great city what? with this wonderful football club that's here that's labored all game and with a Chattanooga team Let's come in here and there play go. good That's football it. themselves, but they'll take it. Chattanooga, they have to be a little bit disappointed with giving away that goal at the death there. But it is Oakland one, Chattanooga one here at full time at Laney College. Well, and I'm the, unsure the, if I'm able to catch my breath still after that equalizer. Well, these fans had a long, long wait for their reward and they kind of lifted the, themselves and lifted the team in the second half, but you, you really didn't think it was going to get a payoff because Chattanooga did so well defensively, but they couldn't hold out for all four minutes, and they gave one up very late. Well, let's take a look at that goal once more. It was Manny Gonzalez's ball right on the right foot of Jack McInerney, who brought it down on the outside of his right foot, shifted it over, beat the goalkeeper, scored, trickled through for his seventh goal in an Oakland shirt. 
right through the goalkeeper's legs. Well, he had to use five substitutes to get a great chance for McInerney. That was Gonzalez, one of the subs by Farrell. And uh, there's the hero, Jack McInerney, come over. We'll be talking to him for an interview here. And he's got to be in a, a great mood because it was definitely looking like the Roots were going to be disappointed once again. They didn't get the victory, but a last-second equalizer is a, a nice way to get a point. It is blow the whistle here on the PA system. And these fans are having a wonderful, wonderful time. And we're able to see their team scrape away to a draw this evening. The first professional match for Chattanooga FC. Gonna send it down to the third member of our team, Callista Tyree, who's with Jordan, Thank excuse you. me, with Jack Mack. Winning, or the tying score right here, Tom, I feel like going, getting into that goal. Yeah, uh, obviously being a man down, a goal down, uh, a couple minutes left, we gotta start dumping balls forward, getting numbers forward, and I don't even know who played me a great ball over. Took a good touch, and just able to toe to poke it by the goalie. And what was that constant match? You guys were down the whole game, you know, what were you guys telling each other? Just trying to keep the tempo up and get that goal in, obviously. Yeah, just keep grinding, I mean, keep going. Obviously, uh, you know, red cards are part of the game, but at the end of the day, you know, there's still 45 minutes to play, you battle, battle, get, take one chance, and you can uh, make something of it. Yeah. And then talk about this fan base right here. How much should they help you guys get that spirit up to get these goals in? Definitely, I mean, cheering the whole 90 minutes, uh, that's the motivation we need. Uh, sometimes it's not pretty, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, we'll take a point. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking with us. And with the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Callista. And the Chattanooga fans are going over to their fans, the Chattahooligans, and saluting them. The Oakland Roots, excuse me, the Oakland Roots players are going over to their fans as well. I'm sure they'll make their way to the other side of the pitch to high five the Roots Radicals. And again, what a night here tonight. It did feel significant. It did feel very, it felt the, the weight, the weight of this moment, the weight of this for both teams because Oakland hadn't won a game. And for Chattanooga, it's the first professional game and they're very professional. They, they came in here, Peter Fuller did a phenomenal job of chatting with us, discussing, showing what he was going to do. He was excitable, he was even keeled. His team almost got the three points. But I chatted with this Chattanooga supporter before the game, and he summed it up brilliantly. He said, we're so excited. This is really special. We're in this together. We're on the forefront of changing the soccer landscape. And tonight, really part of that. Ian McGrath, the goal scorer for Chattanooga, and Jack McInerney, the goal scorer for Oakland, 1-1 this evening. Well, full credit to the Chattahooligans because they brought the biggest flag we saw here tonight. I got to give them credit for that, just for making the trip and coming out and giving their team a lot of support. But a great ending to the game. Great stuff from the Roots. You know, that spirit that we always talk about, whether you go down to 10 men or maybe the referee's not on your side. D'Amico had to make a couple of excellent saves on McInerney, but they plugged away. Fondy had to come off. One of five players who had to be substituted. Manny Gonzalez, one of the players that comes on. They went direct. And McInerney, that first touch to set it up was really nicely done. Several defenders have been in his shorts the whole game. He just had a sliver of space at the end, and he got the goal to bring the Roots a tie in their first game of 2020. And a tie in the first game for Chattanooga in their first ever professional match and first match in Nisa. It is fair to say the Chattanooga flag is planted in the ground for professional soccer for years to come. And the same thing on the side for the Oakland Roots right here at Laney College. If Jordan Farrell would have it anyway, he said he wanted his team to be excitable and have a good time and for the fans to enjoy and come back for another time. So with Mac Dre's feeling myself about to play in this stadium for Callista Tyree, for Ridge Mahoney. My name is Charles Wallet, and they certainly are feeling themselves in Oakland, dancing, having a good, good time. Final score, it is Oakland Roots 1, Chattanooga FC 1. We'll see you next time.